clean and healthy environment for your fish can be a challenge. One effective tool for keeping your koi pond clear and healthy is a UV light. UV lights are effective at reducing algae growth, preventing green water, and improving water clarity. Step 2. Choose the right type of UV light. When choosing a UV light for your koi pond, it is important to select the right type of light for your needs. There are two main types of UV lights, submersible and external. Submersible UV lights are designed to be placed directly in the water and are ideal for smaller ponds, while external UV lights are installed outside of the pond and are ideal for larger. Ponds are those with additional features. Step 3. Determine the right size of UV light. The size of the UV light you choose will depend on the size of your pond and the flow rate of your water pump. As a general rule, you should aim to circulate the entire volume of water in your pond at least once every two hours. To determine the appropriate size of UV light, use the following formula, pond volume, in gallons. 800 equals required UV dose, in watts. Step 4. Install the UV light. After choosing the right type and size of UV light, the next step is to install it in your koi pond. Begin by selecting a location for the UV light that is easily accessible for maintenance and cleaning. Submersible UV lights should be placed in a location with good water flow, such as near the water pump, while external UV lights should be installed in line with the plumbing. Make sure to also install a flow switch or sensor to ensure that the UV light is only on when water is flowing through it. Step 5. Prime the UV light. Before turning on the UV light, it is important to prime it to ensure that any air pockets are removed. To prime the UV light, fill the chamber with water and turn on the water pump. Allow the pump to run until water is flowing steadily through the UV light and out of the discharge pipe. Step 6. Monitor the UV light. After priming the UV light, the next step is to monitor it regularly to ensure that it is functioning properly. Make sure to regularly check the UV bulb for signs of wear or damage, and to replace it as needed. Also, make sure to clean the quart sleeve and replace any seals or gaskets as needed. Step 7. Consider additional features. In addition to a UV light, there are other features you can add to your koi pond to improve water quality, such as biological filters, mechanical filters, and skimmers. These features work in conjunction with the UV light to provide a comprehensive system for maintaining a clean and healthy pond. Step 8. Troubleshoot Common Problems Even with proper installation and maintenance, UV lights can sometimes experience problems. Common issues include a faulty bulb, dirty quartz sleeve, or low water flow. If you experience any problems with your UV light, make sure to troubleshoot the issue promptly to prevent further damage or harm to your koi. Step 9. Replace the UV bulb regularly. To maintain optimal performance, it is important to replace the UV bulb in your koi pond regularly. UV bulbs typically last between 6 to 12 months, depending on usage and water quality. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for replacing the bulb, 
and to choose a high-quality replacement bulb for best results. Step 10. Enjoy your clean and healthy koi pond. With proper use and maintenance of a UV light in your koi pond, you can enjoy a beautiful and a healthy environment for your fish. Make sure to monitor the UV light regularly, replace the bulb as needed, and seek professional help if you experience any issues or concerns. Step 11. Use a UV light timer. To maximize the effectiveness of your UV light, consider using a timer to ensure that it is running for the appropriate amount of time each day. UV lights should be run for a minimum of 8 to 10 hours per day, but no more than 24 hours per day. Using a timer can also help to extend the lifespan of the UV bulb and reduce energy usage. Step 12. Monitor water quality. Along with using a UV light, it is important to regularly monitor the water quality in your koi pond. This includes testing the water for pH, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels, and making any necessary adjustments to maintain proper water quality. UV lights are effective at reducing algae growth and improving water clarity, but they do not eliminate the need for regular water testing and maintenance. Step 13. Consider a combination system. For larger or more heavily stocked koi ponds, a combination system that includes both a UV light and a biological filter may be necessary. A biological filter uses beneficial bacteria to break down organic waste in the water, which can help to prevent ammonia and nitrite spikes. When used in conjunction with a UV light, a biological filter can provide a comprehensive system for maintaining a clean and healthy koi pond. Step 14. Seek professional help when needed. Maintaining a healthy and clean koi pond can be challenging, especially for those new to the hobby. If you are unsure how to properly use a UV light or maintain your pond, consider seeking professional help. A professional can provide guidance on choosing the right UV light, installing it properly, and maintaining proper water quality, and can also troubleshoot any issues that arise. Step 15. Practice proper safety precautions. When using a UV light in your koi pond, it is important to practice proper safety precautions to prevent harm to yourself and your fish. UV radiation can be harmful to human skin and eyes, so make sure to wear protective clothing and eyewear when installing or maintaining the UV light. Also, make sure to turn off the UV light before performing any maintenance on the pump or plumbing. Step 16. Clean the UV light regularly. To ensure that your UV light is functioning at its best, it is important to clean it regularly. Over time, algae and other debris can build up on the quartz sleeve, which can reduce the effectiveness of the UV light. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for cleaning the UV light, and to clean the quartz sleeve and other components as needed. Step 17. Replace the quartz sleeve. In addition to regular cleaning, it may also be necessary to replace the quartz sleeve in your UV light. Quartz sleeves can become scratched or damaged over time, which can reduce the effectiveness of the UV light. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for replacing the quartz sleeve, and to choose a high-quality replacement for best results. Step 18. Consider the placement of the UV light. The placement of your UV light can also impact its effectiveness. UV lights work best when water flow is slow and steady, so make sure to place the UV light in an area with good water flow. Avoid placing the UV light in an area with turbulent water, as this can reduce its effectiveness. Step 19. Upgrade your UV light when necessary. Over time, your koi pond may grow or change, which may require an upgrade to your UV light. 
If you notice that your current UV light is no longer effective at maintaining water clarity, it may be time to upgrade to a larger or more powerful UV light. Hamsters are adorable and popular pets that bring joy and companionship to many households. However, like any living creature, hamsters can fall ill and require special care to recover from an illness. If your hamster has been sick, here are some tips to help them recover and regain their health. Consult with a veterinarian. If your hamster is showing signs of illness, it's important to seek veterinary care as soon as possible. A veterinarian can diagnose the underlying cause of your hamster's illness and provide appropriate treatment. Provide a quiet and comfortable environment. Hamsters need a quiet and comfortable environment to reduce stress and promote healing. Provide a cozy and warm nest for your hamster to rest in, and minimize noise and disturbances in their living space. Maintain proper hygiene. Good hygiene is essential for preventing the spread of illness and promoting healing. Clean your hamster's cage regularly, including the bedding, food dishes, and water bottle. Use pet-safe cleaning products and avoid harsh chemicals. Offer fresh and nutritious food. Good nutrition is important for promoting healing and maintaining health. Offer your hamster fresh and nutritious food, such as fresh vegetables, fruits, and high-quality hamster food. Make sure to provide fresh water at all times. Administer medication as prescribed. If your hamster has been prescribed medication, make sure to administer it as directed by your veterinarian. Follow the dosage instructions carefully and complete the full course of treatment. Monitor your hamster's behavior. Keep a close eye on your hamster's behavior and monitor any changes in their appetite, energy level, or behavior. Report any concerns to your veterinarian and follow their advice. Provide mental stimulation. Mental stimulation is important for your hamster's overall well-being, especially during recovery. Provide toys and activities that are appropriate for your hamster's age and species, such as chew toys, tunnels, and exercise wheels. Keep your hamster warm. Hamsters require a warm and stable temperature to maintain their health. Ensure that their living space is kept at a consistent temperature, and provide extra bedding and a warm nest for your hamster to snuggle in. Avoid stress. Stress can have a negative impact on your hamster's health and recovery. Avoid handling your hamster excessively or introducing new pets or people to their living space during the recovery period. Provide a comfortable and safe recovery space. If your hamster is recovering from an illness, it's important to provide them with a comfortable and safe space to rest and heal. Consider setting up a separate recovery space, such as a small cage or enclosure, that is free from distractions and potential hazards. Offer supportive care. In addition to medication, your hamster may require supportive care to aid in their recovery. This may include providing fluids, offering soft or mashed foods, or administering supplements as recommended by your veterinarian. Monitor your hamster's weight. Weight loss is common in sick hamsters, and it's important to monitor your hamster's weight during the recovery period. Weigh your hamster regularly and report any significant changes to your veterinarian. 
Provide a calm and stress-free recovery period. During your hamster's recovery period, it's important to minimize stress and provide a calm and quiet environment. Avoid loud noises, sudden movements, and other potential stressors that could delay their recovery. Gradually reintroduce exercise. Once your hamster has started to recover, you can gradually reintroduce exercise and activity. Offer your hamster small amounts of exercise, such as short walks in a playpen or supervised time in an exercise wheel. Continue to monitor your hamster's health. Even after your hamster has recovered, it's important to continue monitoring their health and well-being. Schedule regular checkups with your veterinarian and report any changes in your hamster's behavior or health. Provide a comfortable temperature. Hamsters are sensitive to temperature changes, so it's important to maintain a comfortable temperature in their living space. Keep their cage in a room with a stable temperature, away from direct sunlight and drafts. Keep their living space clean. A clean living space is essential for your hamster's health and well-being, especially during their recovery period. Clean their cage regularly, removing any uneaten food, soiled bedding, and waste. Limit exposure to other pets. If you have other pets in the house, it's important to limit your hamster's exposure to them. Keep them in separate rooms or use a protective barrier to prevent any potential harm or stress. Provide a variety of toys. Offer your hamster a variety of toys to keep them mentally stimulated and entertained. Provide chew toys, tunnels, and exercise wheels and rotate them to keep your hamster engaged and interested. Be patient, recovery from illness can take time, so it's important to be patient and provide your hamster with the care and attention they need. Follow your veterinarian's advice and monitor your hamster's progress, celebrating small victories along the way. Watch for signs of relapse, even after your hamster has recovered, it's important to watch for signs of relapse. If your hamster shows any signs of illness or distress, seek veterinary care immediately. Provide adequate rest. Rest is important for your hamster's recovery, so make sure they have a comfortable and quiet place to rest. Avoid disturbing them unnecessarily and provide them with a warm and cozy nest. Offer small, frequent meals. If your hamster has a decreased appetite during their recovery, offer them small, frequent meals throughout the day to maintain their nutrient intake. Seek support. Caring for a sick hamster can be stressful, so it's important to seek support from family, friends, or online communities. Share your experiences and seek advice from fellow hamster owners who have gone through similar situations. Provide fresh air and ventilation. Good air quality is important for your hamster's respiratory health. Make sure their living space is well ventilated, and avoid using aerosol sprays or other products that could irritate their lungs. Minimize handling. During your hamster's recovery period, it's important to minimize handling and avoid unnecessary stress. Handle them gently and only when needed for medication or other necessary care. Use a comfortable bedding. A comfortable and safe bedding is important for your hamster's recovery. Choose a soft and absorbent bedding that is appropriate for your hamster's species and age, and avoid using materials that could be harmful if ingested. Provide a hiding place. Hamsters need a safe and cozy hiding place to retreat to when they feel stressed or anxious. 
offer a small, enclosed space, such as a tunnel or hideout, where your hamster can feel safe and secure. Asaka dogs are a popular breed of dog known for their loyalty, intelligence, and friendly personality. As with any dog, it's important to provide them with a healthy and balanced diet to ensure they stay healthy and happy. In this guide, we'll go over some of the types of food and nutrition that are best for Asaka dogs. Firstly, it's important to choose a high-quality dog food that is specifically designed for Asaka dogs. Look for a dog food that contains a balance of protein, fat, and carbohydrates, as well as essential vitamins and minerals. Avoid dog foods that contain fillers or artificial ingredients, as these can be harmful to the digestive system and overall health of your Asaka dog. When it comes to protein, Asaka dogs require a diet that is rich in high-quality animal protein. This can come from sources such as chicken, beef, lamb, fish, and eggs. The protein in the diet helps to build and repair muscle tissue, as well as support the immune system and overall health of the dog. When choosing carbohydrates for your Asaka dog, opt for complex carbohydrates such as brown rice, sweet potatoes, and quinoa. These carbohydrates provide a slow release of energy and can help to keep your Asaka dog feeling full and satisfied throughout the day. Avoid simple carbohydrates such as white bread and pasta, as these can cause spikes in blood sugar and lead to weight gain. In addition to protein and carbohydrates, Asaka dogs also require a healthy source of fat in their diet. Look for dog foods that contain healthy fats such as omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which can help to support the health of the skin and coat, as well as the immune system. Sources of healthy fats can include fish oil, flaxseed, and chicken fat. It's also important to provide your Asaka dog with plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. These can provide essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that can help to support overall health and prevent disease. Some good options include carrots, blueberries, spinach, and broccoli. In addition to a balanced diet, it's important to ensure that your Asaka dog has access to plenty of fresh and clean water. Dehydration can lead to a number of health problems, so make sure that your Asaka dog always has access to a bowl of fresh water. When it comes to feeding your Asaka dog, it's best to feed them two to three small meals per day, rather than one large meal. This can help to prevent bloating and digestive issues, and also helps to keep your Asaka dog feeling full and satisfied throughout the day. If you're unsure about what to feed your Asaka dog, it's always best to consult with a veterinarian or animal nutritionist. They can help you to create a personalized meal plan that is tailored to the specific needs of your Asaka dog. In addition to a healthy diet, it's also important to provide your Asaka dog with plenty of exercise and mental stimulation. Asaka dogs are energetic and intelligent, and require plenty of physical and mental stimulation to stay happy and healthy. Daily walks, playtime, and training sessions can help to keep your Asaka dog engaged and stimulated. In conclusion, providing your Asaka dog with a healthy and balanced diet is essential for maintaining their overall health and well-being. Choose a high-quality dog food that contains a balance of protein, fat, and carbohydrates, as well as essential vitamins and minerals. 
provide your Osaka dog with plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables, and ensure that they have access to plenty of fresh and clean water. If you're unsure about what to feed your Osaka dog, consult with a veterinarian or animal nutritionist for personalized advice. By providing your Osaka dog with a healthy diet and plenty of exercise and mental stimulation, you can help them to live a long and happy life. In addition to a healthy diet and regular exercise, there are other ways to support the health and well-being of your Osaka dog. One important aspect is dental hygiene. Regularly brushing your Osaka dog's teeth can help to prevent dental issues such as gum disease and tooth decay. You can also provide dental chews or toys to help keep their teeth clean and healthy. Another important aspect is regular checkups with a veterinarian. Annual wellness exams can help to catch any potential health issues early and prevent them from developing into more serious problems. Your veterinarian can also provide recommendations for any additional supplements or treatments that may benefit your Osaka dog's health. In terms of supplements, there are several options that can be beneficial for Osaka dogs. Omega-3 supplements can help to support the health of the skin and coat, as well as the immune system. Glucosamine and chondroitin supplements can help to support joint health and prevent arthritis. Osaka dogs are also prone to certain health issues, such as hip dysplasia and eye problems. It's important to be aware of these potential issues and take steps to prevent or manage them as needed. Regular exercise and maintaining a healthy weight can help to prevent hip dysplasia, while regular eye exams can help to catch any potential issues early. When it comes to grooming your Osaka dog, regular brushing can help to keep their coat healthy and shiny. Osaka dogs have a thick and dense coat, so it's important to brush them at least once a week to prevent matting and tangles. You can also bathe them as needed, but be sure to use a dog-specific shampoo to prevent skin irritation. In conclusion, there are many ways to support the health and well-being of your Osaka dog. Providing them with a healthy diet, regular exercise, and proper dental hygiene can help to prevent health issues and promote overall health. Regular checkups with a veterinarian, as well as supplements and grooming, can also be beneficial for their health. By taking a proactive approach to their care, you can help your Osaka dog live a long and happy life. Osaka dogs are known for their friendly and affectionate personalities, and they thrive on human interaction and attention. Providing your Osaka dog with plenty of socialization and training is essential for their mental and emotional well-being. Socialization involves exposing your Osaka dog to a variety of people, animals, and environments from a young age. This can help them to become more confident and comfortable in different situations, and reduce the risk of behavioral issues such as aggression or anxiety. Enrolling your Osaka dog in puppy classes or obedience training can also help to build their confidence and improve their social skills. In addition to socialization, training is also important for Osaka dogs. As highly intelligent and trainable dogs, Osaka dogs excel at obedience training, agility training, and other activities that challenge their minds and bodies. Training can also help to prevent behavioral issues by providing your Osaka dog with structure and boundaries. Taking care of your pet's fur is an important part of their overall health and well-being. Maintaining a clean and healthy coat can prevent skin irritations and infections while also keeping your pet looking and feeling their best. In this guide, we'll discuss how to care for and clean the fur on your pet's face and legs. Caring for your pet's face The fur on your pet's face is sensitive and requires special attention. Regular grooming can help to keep the fur around their eyes, nose, and mouth clean and free from tangles.
Here are some tips for caring for your pet's face. Brushing, use a soft bristled brush or comb to gently brush your pet's face. Be careful around their eyes and nose, and avoid pulling on the fur. Brushing regularly can help to prevent tangles and mats. Trimming. If your pet's fur around their eyes is long, it can cause irritation and eye infections. Use scissors or clippers to carefully trim the fur around their eyes, being careful not to poke their eyes with the tools. Cleaning. Use a damp cloth or cotton ball to gently clean your pet's face, especially around their eyes and nose. This can help to remove any dirt or debris that may have accumulated and prevent infections. Tear stains. Some pets are prone to tear stains, especially white or light-colored breeds. Use a tear stain remover specifically designed for pets to clean the area around their eyes and prevent discoloration. Caring for your pet's legs. The fur on your pet's legs can also require special attention, especially if they have long hair. Here are some tips for caring for your pet's legs. Brushing. Use a soft bristled brush or comb to gently brush your pet's legs, paying special attention to any tangles or mats. Brushing regularly can prevent tangles and mats from forming. Trimming. If your pet's leg fur is long, it can become tangled and matted. Use scissors or clippers to carefully trim the fur, being careful not to cut their skin. Cleaning. Use a damp cloth or pet wipe to gently clean your pet's legs, especially if they have been outside or in a dirty environment. This can help to remove any dirt or debris that may have accumulated. Paw care. Your pet's paws can also require special attention. Use a pet safe paw balm or lotion to keep their paws moisturized and prevent cracking. Trim their nails regularly to prevent them from becoming too long and causing discomfort. In addition to regular grooming, it's important to keep your pet's overall health in mind when caring for their fur. Proper nutrition, regular exercise, and veterinary checkups can all contribute to a healthy coat. If you notice any changes in your pet's fur, such as excessive shedding or skin irritation, consult with your veterinarian to rule out any underlying health issues. In conclusion, Caring for your pet's face and legs is an important part of their overall grooming routine. Regular brushing, trimming, and cleaning can help to prevent tangles, mats, and skin irritations. It's also important to keep your pet's overall health in mind by providing them with proper nutrition, regular exercise, and veterinary care. By taking a proactive approach to your pet's grooming and health, you can help them to look and feel their best. Taking care of your pet's fur is an important part of their overall health and well-being. In addition to caring for their face and legs, it's also important to maintain a clean and healthy coat all over their body. In this guide, We'll discuss some tips and techniques for grooming and cleaning your pet's fur. Brushing. Regular brushing is essential for maintaining a healthy coat for your pet. It helps to remove loose fur, dirt, and debris, prevents matting, and distributes natural oils throughout their fur. The type of brush you use will depend on your pet's fur type. For example, dogs with short coats may need a soft bristled brush, while those with longer fur may require a slicker brush or comb. 
Brushing your pet's fur once a day is ideal, but even once or twice a week can make a significant difference in the health of their coat. Bathing Bathing your pet is another important aspect of their grooming routine. However, it's important not to overbathe them, as it can strip their skin and fur of natural oils. The frequency of bathing will depend on your pet's breed, coat type, and activity level. Generally, dogs can be bathed every four to six weeks, while cats may only require a bath once or twice a year. Use a pet-specific shampoo and conditioner, and be sure to rinse thoroughly to avoid leaving any residue. After bathing, use a towel to dry your pet, or a hair dryer set on a low heat setting. Trimming Trimming your pet's fur can help to prevent matting and tangles, as well as keep their coat looking neat and tidy. The type and frequency of trimming will depend on your pet's breed and coat type. Some pets may require regular haircuts, while others may only need occasional trims. When trimming your a soft bristled toothbrush and pet-specific toothpaste. You can also provide dental chews or toys to help keep their teeth clean and healthy. Ear care. Maintaining clean and healthy ears is also important for your pet's overall health. Regularly check your pet's ears for any signs of redness, discharge, or odor. Use a pet-specific ear cleaner to gently clean their ears, being careful not to insert anything into their ear canal. In conclusion, maintaining a healthy coat for your pet requires regular grooming, bathing, trimming, dental care, and ear care. By taking a proactive approach to your pet's grooming routine, you can help them to look and feel their best, while also preventing potential health issues. If you have any questions or concerns about your pet's grooming or health, consult with your veterinarian for guidance. Caring for your pet's fur is essential for their overall health and happiness. Training your cat can be a rewarding and fulfilling experience for both you and your feline friend. Whether you want to teach your cat new tricks or simply improve their behavior, there are many ways to train your cat and help them learn new skills. In this guide, we'll explore some tips and techniques for training your cat to learn new skills. Understanding your cat's personality Before you start training your cat, it's important to understand their personality. Some cats are more independent and may be harder to train, while others are more social and enjoy interacting with their owners. Understanding your cat's personality can help you tailor your training approach to their needs. Positive reinforcement Positive reinforcement is one of the most effective methods for training cats. This involves rewarding your cat for good behavior and ignoring or redirecting bad behavior. Rewards can include treats, toys, or affection. Using positive reinforcement can help your cat associate good behavior with positive outcomes, which can encourage them to repeat that behavior in the future. Clicker training. 
Clicker training is a popular method for training cats. This involves using a clicker to mark good behavior and then rewarding your cat with a treat or toy. Clicker training can be used to teach your cat a variety of skills, including tricks, obedience commands, and even agility training. Target training Target training involves teaching your cat to touch a specific object, such as a stick or your hand, with their nose or paw. This can be used to teach your cat to come when called, jump through hoops, or perform other tricks. Target training can also be used to redirect your cat's behavior, such as teaching them to scratch a designated scratching post instead of your furniture. Leash training Leash training can be a great way to help your cat explore the outdoors safely. Start by introducing your cat to a harness and leash indoors, allowing them to get used to the feeling of wearing it. Once they are comfortable, you can start taking them outside on a leash. Be sure to supervise your cat at all times and avoid letting them roam freely. Litter box training Litter box training is an important skill for all cats to learn. Start by providing your cat with a clean litter box in a quiet, accessible location. Encourage your cat to use the litter box by placing them in it after meals or naps. Be patient and consistent, and avoid punishing your cat for accidents. In conclusion, training your cat can be a fun and rewarding experience. Understanding your cat's personality and using positive reinforcement can help you successfully train your cat to learn new skills. Whether you want to teach your cat tricks or simply improve their behavior, there are many methods and techniques you can use to train your cat. Be patient, consistent, and don't forget to reward your cat for their hard work. Training your cat is a great way to strengthen the bond between you and your furry friend while also improving their behavior and teaching them new skills. In this guide, we'll explore some additional tips and techniques for training your cat. Consistency Consistency is key when it comes to training your cat. Be sure to use the same commands and techniques every time you train your cat. This will help your cat understand what is expected of them and make it easier for them to learn new skills. Patience Training your cat can take time, so it's important to be patient. Don't get discouraged if your cat doesn't learn a new skill right away. Keep practicing and rewarding good behavior, and your cat will eventually learn. Timing Timing is also important when it comes to training your cat. Be sure to reward good behavior immediately after it occurs. This will help your cat make the connection between their behavior and the reward. Avoid punishment Punishing your cat for bad behavior can be counterproductive. Instead, try to redirect their behavior or ignore it altogether. Punishing your cat can cause them to become anxious or fearful, which can make training more difficult. Socialization Socialization is an important part of training your cat. Expose your cat to new people pets, and environments to help them become more comfortable in different situations. 
This can help prevent problem behavior such as aggression or fear. Problem behavior. If your cat exhibits problem behavior such as aggression or destructive behavior, seek the help of a professional trainer or behaviorist. They can help identify the root cause of the behavior and develop a plan to address it. Conclusion Training your cat can be a fun and rewarding experience for both you and your feline friend. By using positive reinforcement, being patient and consistent, and avoiding punishment, you can successfully train your cat to learn new skills and improve their behavior. Remember to socialize your cat and seek professional help for problem behavior if needed. With time and patience, your cat can become a well-behaved and happy companion. As a cat owner, training your furry friend is not only important for their physical health but also their mental well-being. It can be a fun and rewarding experience to teach your cat new tricks or improve their behavior. In this guide, we'll explore some additional tips and techniques for training your cat. Environmental Enrichment Environmental enrichment is the process of providing an environment that is stimulating and engaging for your cat. This can include providing toys, scratching posts, and perches for your cat to climb on. By creating a stimulating environment, you can help prevent problem behavior such as destructive chewing or scratching. Body Language Understanding your cat's body language is an important part of training. Cats communicate with their body language, so it's important to pay attention to their cues. For example, a cat that is flicking their tail may be annoyed or agitated, while a cat that is purring may be content. Creating the perfect wave in your koi pond, a guide to using wave makers. Koi ponds are a beautiful addition to any backyard, but maintaining the ideal environment for your fish can be a challenge. One of the key factors in maintaining a healthy and thriving koi pond is water circulation. Proper water circulation ensures that the water in the pond is properly oxygenated and that waste and debris are properly filtered out. One way to improve water circulation in your koi pond is by using a wave maker, also known as a water circulator. In this guide, we will discuss what a wave maker is, why you might want to use one, and how to use one effectively in your koi pond. What is a wave maker? A wave maker is a device that creates waves in your koi pond. It's designed to mimic the natural flow of water found in rivers and oceans. Wave makers come in different sizes and shapes, but they all work on the same basic principle. They create a current in the water, which causes the water to move in a circular motion. This circular motion helps to improve water circulation in your koi pond, which can have a number of benefits for your fish. Why use a wave maker in your koi pond? There are several reasons why you might want to use a wave maker in your koi pond. First and foremost, it helps to improve water circulation. This, in turn, can help to prevent the buildup of harmful bacteria and algae in the water. Proper water circulation also ensures that the oxygen level in the water is maintained at a healthy level, which is essential for the health of your fish. In addition to improving water circulation, a wave maker can also help to create a more natural environment for your fish. Koi naturally live in rivers and streams, where there is a constant flow of water. By using a wave maker, you can mimic this natural flow and create a more natural environment for your fish. Finally, 
a wave maker can be a great way to add a decorative element to your koi pond. Many wave makers come with LED lights, which can be used to create a stunning visual effect in your pond. Some wave makers also come with different speed settings, which allows you to create different types of waves in your pond. How to use a wave maker in your koi pond? Using a wave maker in your koi pond is relatively easy. Here are the steps you need to follow. Choose the right wave maker. There are many different wave makers on the market, so it's important to choose one that is appropriate for the size of your pond. A general rule of thumb is to choose a wave maker that can circulate the entire volume of your pond at least once per hour. Install the wave maker. Once you've chosen the right wave maker, it's time to install it in your pond. Most wave makers come with suction cups that allow you to attach them to the side of your pond. Make sure the wave maker is positioned so that it creates a circular motion in the water. Adjust the speed. Most wave makers come with different speed settings, so you can adjust the speed to create the desired effect in your pond. If you're not sure what speed to use, start with a low speed and gradually increase it until you achieve the desired effect. Monitor the water. Once the wave maker is installed, it's important to monitor the water in your pond to make sure it's circulating properly. Check the water for any signs of stagnation and adjust the speed of the wave maker as needed. Clean the wave maker. Over time, the wave maker can become clogged with debris and algae. Make sure to clean the wave maker regularly to ensure that it's working properly. In conclusion, using a wave maker in your koi pond can have a number of benefits for your fish. It helps to improve water circulation, creates a more natural environment, and can add a decorative element to your pond. By following the steps outlined in this guide, you can use a wave maker effectively in your koi pond and keep your fish happy and healthy. Creating the perfect wave in your koi pond, a guide to using wave makers part two. Tips for using a wave maker in your koi pond. While using a wave maker in your koi pond can be a great way to improve water circulation and create a more natural environment for your fish, there are a few things to keep in mind to ensure that you are using your wave maker effectively. Choose the right size. As mentioned earlier, it's important to choose a wave maker that is appropriate for the size of your pond. A wave maker that is too small will not be able to circulate the water properly, and a wave maker that is too large can create too much turbulence in the water, which can be harmful to your fish. Be sure to check the manufacturer's recommendations for the appropriate size for your pond. Position the wave maker correctly. It's important to position the wave maker correctly in your pond to ensure that it creates a circular motion in the water. This will help to ensure that the water is circulating properly and that your fish are able to swim comfortably. Avoid positioning the wave maker near the surface of the water, as this can create too much turbulence and disturb the surface tension of the water. Use the right speed. Using the right speed on your wave maker is essential to creating the perfect wave in your koi pond. A speed that is too slow will not create enough movement in the water, while a speed that is too fast can create too much turbulence and be harmful to your fish. Start with a low speed and gradually increase it until you achieve the desired effect. Monitor the water quality. Using a wave maker can help to improve water circulation and prevent the buildup of harmful bacteria and algae, but it's still important to monitor the water. Quality in your pond regularly. 
test the water regularly for pH, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels, and make adjustments as needed to maintain a healthy environment for your fish. Clean the wave maker regularly. Over time, the wave maker can become clogged with debris and algae, which can decrease its effectiveness. Clean the wave maker regularly to ensure that it's working properly, and replace it if it becomes damaged or worn. Conclusion Using a wave maker in your koi pond can be a great way to improve water circulation, create a more natural environment for your fish, and add a decorative element to your pond. By choosing the right size, positioning it correctly, using the right speed, monitoring water quality, and cleaning it regularly, you can use your wave maker effectively and keep your fish happy. And healthy. Remember to always follow the manufacturer's instructions for your specific wave maker and consult with a professional if you have any questions or concerns about using a wave maker in your koi pond. Creating the perfect wave in your koi pond, a guide to using wave makers part 3. Common mistakes to avoid. While using a wave maker in your koi pond can be a great way to improve water circulation and create a more natural environment for your fish. There are some common mistakes that people make when using a wave maker. Traveling with your hamster. Tips for keeping your furry friend comfortable. Traveling with your hamster can be a fun and exciting experience for both you and your furry friend. However, it's important to take the necessary precautions to ensure that your hamster is safe and comfortable during the trip. In this guide, we will discuss tips for keeping your hamster comfortable when traveling with you. Preparing for the trip Before you embark on your journey with your hamster, it's important to take some time to prepare for the trip. Here are some things to keep in mind. Check with your vet. Before you travel with your hamster, it's a good idea to check with your vet to make sure that your hamster is healthy enough for travel. Your vet may also be able to provide you with additional tips and advice for traveling with your hamster. Choose the right carrier. Choosing the right carrier for your hamster is essential to keeping your furry friend comfortable during the trip. Choose a carrier that is appropriately sized for your hamster and has good ventilation. Pack the essentials. Make sure to pack all of the essentials for your hamster, including food, water, bedding, and toys. It's also a good idea to bring a small first aid kit, just in case. Plan your route. When traveling with your hamster, it's important to plan your route carefully. Choose routes that have rest stops where you can let your hamster out of the carrier for a little while. Keep the carrier secure. Make sure that the carrier is secure and won't tip over during the trip. It's also a good idea to place the carrier on the floor of the car, rather than on a seat. During the trip Once you're on the road with your hamster, there are a few things you can do to keep your furry friend comfortable. Keep the temperature consistent. Hamsters are sensitive to temperature changes, so it's important to keep the temperature in the car consistent. Avoid leaving the carrier in direct sunlight or near air conditioning vents. Provide food and water. Make sure to provide your hamster with fresh food and water during the trip. It's a good idea to bring a small water bottle that you can attach to the carrier. Give your hamster some space. While it's important to keep your hamster secure in the carrier during the trip, it's also important to give your furry friend some space. 
consider letting your hamster out of the carrier for a little while at rest stops. Keep the carrier clean. Hamsters are clean animals, so it's important to keep the carrier clean during the trip. Bring extra bedding and clean the carrier as needed. Provide comfort. Finally, provide your hamster with some comfort during the trip. Bring along some of your hamster's favorite toys or blankets to help them feel more at ease. Conclusion Traveling with your hamster can be a fun and exciting experience, but it's important to take the necessary precautions to keep your furry friend comfortable during the trip. By choosing the right carrier, packing the essentials, planning your route, and providing comfort and care during the trip, you can ensure that your hamster stays happy and healthy while traveling with you. Traveling with your hamster, tips for keeping your furry friend comfortable part 2. Additional tips for traveling with your hamster. In addition to the tips outlined in part 1, there are a few additional things to keep in mind when traveling with your hamster. Keep the carrier covered, hamsters are prey animals and can become stressed if they feel exposed. Keep the carrier covered with a light blanket or towel to provide some privacy and security for your hamster. Avoid traveling during hot weather, hamsters are sensitive to heat, so it's best to avoid traveling with your hamster during hot weather. If you must travel during hot weather, make sure to keep the carrier in a cool, shaded area. Take breaks often. It's important to take breaks often during the trip to let your hamster stretch its legs and use the bathroom. Make sure to provide a small litter box or a shallow dish of litter for your hamster to use. Be mindful of noise. Hamsters have sensitive ears and can become stressed by loud noises. Try to keep the environment in the car as quiet as possible. Avoid playing loud music or talking loudly. Consider a harness. If you plan on letting your hamster out of the carrier during rest stops, consider using a harness to keep your furry friend safe. Hamsters can be fast and can easily escape, so a harness can provide added security. Conclusion Traveling with your hamster can be a great way to bond with your furry friend and create new memories. However, it's important to take the necessary precautions to keep your hamster comfortable and safe during the trip. By following the tips outlined in this guide, you can ensure that your hamster stays happy and healthy while traveling with you. Remember to always consult with your vet before traveling with your hamster and to make sure that your furry friend is healthy enough for travel. Safe Travels Traveling with your hamster Tips for keeping your furry friend comfortable Part 3. Preparing for your return trip When preparing for your return trip with your hamster, there are a few additional things to keep in mind. Check for any changes in your hamster's health. While traveling, it's important to monitor your hamster's health and behavior. If you notice any changes, such as a decrease in appetite or lethargy, contact your vet right away. Pack extra supplies. Make sure to pack extra supplies for your hamster, such as food, water, bedding, and toys. It's better to have too much than not enough. Clean the carrier. Before heading back home, make sure to clean the carrier thoroughly. This will help to keep your hamster comfortable during the trip. Plan your route. When planning your return trip, Make sure to choose a route that is safe and has rest stops. If possible, avoid traveling during rush hour or other busy times. Give your hamster time to adjust. When you return home, give your hamster some time to adjust to its surroundings. Make sure to provide plenty of food, water, and love to help your furry friend feel comfortable. Conclusion Traveling with your hamster can be a fun and exciting experience, but it's important to take the necessary precautions to keep your furry friend comfortable and safe during the trip. By preparing for the trip, 
providing comfort and care during the trip, and preparing for your return trip, you can ensure that your hamster stays happy and healthy while traveling with you.